Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. We learned about it online. Um, my brother, uh, he's two years younger than me. Our families have lived close to each other, and he got transferred from our town up to Colorado Springs, and so we were desperately looking for some kind of a good Christian school for his kids to go to. And I'm looking around, looking around, and a couple came up, and I looked at this one, and I was like, this one looks pretty good. You should go check it out. So he did. Um, they loved it, um, and they loved it so much that a couple years later when we had the opportunity to come up here, we came up here. One of the big reasons was to go to the school ourselves. Um, I started off as a principal up at Woodland Park. Um, I was blessed to be there for two years. Some amazing people up there. They are their own little branch and breed, and it's wonderful. Um, and then my, I don't think my gifting is administration, but I have a willing heart. And so after two years, uh, Roland and Diane were gracious enough to let me come back and, and teach. Um, that's what I really would like to do. Um, I was going to be the uh, English teacher stepping in for 10th grade for a legendary teacher who is about to retire. Um, so I spent the whole summer you know, reading the English curriculum and looking at her notes, collaborating with her. And a week before school started, um, the, the then principal came and said, hey, we, we really need a Bible teacher. Would you step in? And I was like, well, absolutely. So, so that's how I became a Bible teacher. It's God's word and it's his love story. It's, it's a love letter. I, I like to think of it. Remember back in the day when we wrote love letters and you would fold them up and you'd put them in your pocket and you'd take them out and you'd look at them and you'd look at every little dot of an eye and how did she put the heart you know that's his word and that's what i want the kids to see i want the kids to see that this is a, a special treasure we have specific revelation not just general creation but we have we can know who he is we can know what he loves and and it's for us right so my goal is to to help them understand it and then just help them fall in love with it like i have so i think the vision the mission and the heart is to just raise up disciples um, people who love Jesus. We want to give them an excellent education. We want to be good at what we do. Um, and then we want them to go out and be Christ followers and leaders so, and, and servers. I think number one, it has to start with the life of the teacher. The teacher has to live an authentic Christian life in front of the kids because you can't say one thing and then do another. Kids are watching what we do and they're watching who we are. And it's in those unplanned times and the times when the computer doesn't work or the fire drill went off in the middle of your pet lecture or whatever it was, that's when we have a chance to really, really be that thing that the parents want us to be. And so, yes, the curriculum is important. Yes, our plans and our things are important, but are we living authentic, joyful lives in front of the kids? And, and are we showing them how beautiful Christianity can be? Like it's this exciting, passionate love relationship and it's an adventure. It's a crazy adventure. And are we, presenting it to them in a way that's authentic, but also like inviting. I mean, sometimes it's the little kids up in Willem Park, the elementary, first, second, third graders who are asking really, really deep questions. I think sometimes the older kids kind of want to pretend like they know the answers or maybe they're not thinking about it, they're avoiding thinking about it, but yeah. We, we've, we can't can it, you can't program it. It has to be something that is a genuine response to being in love with the Lord. We can kind of make kids do it out of duty. It can kind of be something that you do because you feel like you're supposed to, but that's not going to produce uh, true discipleship and true evangelism. Discipleship to me is just about relationships. It's me enjoying, uh, realizing that I'm in a relationship with you and that I'm being uh, sharpened and encouraged by you and then wanting to give that same relationship opportunity to somebody else. I don't think you can do that with a program. I mean, you can, and, and, and maybe 10 or 15% of those discipleship opportunities will, will continue to be authentic, real things, but I think it has to be organic and authentic, and it has to come from a, from a place of just, I am in love with Jesus. I, I love his presence. I love what he does in my life. I love following him, and I want that for you. And these are some things I've walked through ahead of you, and I care about you enough to kind of, let's get together, and how can we how can we help each other through this? And we're working on developing the whole child here. I mean, we really are. And we've got different pillars. That there's four pillars, and there's academics, and there's athletics, and there's fine arts, and there's student life. And these are all things that we talk about. But they're really just four different ways to say, you are a, a multifaceted creature. And you're a multifaceted creature over a multi-age range. So how are we going to help you develop in all these different areas? And so 
very comprehensive athletic program starting really even in elementary school with like land sharks and up through middle school and then into high school of course which is like you know the big deal fine arts um, I've been so blessed by the fine arts pillar here uh, my son's an amazing singer and we never knew like we didn't know we didn't know he could even sing um, and somehow or other he heard about choir and decided he would go out and now he's in like the top choir he's got a solo today so and, and this is something I really appreciate that um, through the teachers here God has brought out the giftings that he's given my kids um, I've got a daughter who's in her second year of college and a son who's a senior and they both went through high school here my son went through middle school and high school here and it's just been really cool to see them blossom and to see God unfold their gifts that we didn't even know they had my my daughter was a little leader and she got involved in student council with Mrs. Perquet and Mrs. Perquet kind of very quietly drew her along and this whole side of her opened up this whole gifting and, and ability that we didn't know she had and same with my son I mean I heard him sing in the shower but I mean you know like he's singing on stage now and that's not something that we we're not a singing family nobody in our family sings you know so other than like very quietly at church right. so people are here and people stay here because it's a calling because they feel like this is the duty station that God has for them at this time um, and they're here because they care deeply about kids and they care deeply about their subject but unfolding that subject or unfolding that skill set through a Christian worldview from a Christian perspective because we can go and do that you know through a worldly perspective anywhere right but this is a really really special place because we get to do it like we don't just get to do it we're we're tasked we're mandated with doing it everything that we're doing should come from a from a biblical worldview so and then learning how to sharpen that and deepen that as a math teacher as a history teacher as an english teacher what does it look like i've got it easy M my whole subject is biblical integration right but the math teachers that we have the science teachers that we have drama and art um, our art teacher, middle school art teacher, blew me away with talking about her favorite artist and how she teaches and why she teaches. And it's all about glorifying God. He's the author of beauty. He's the author of truth. And so unfolding that and revealing that to kids, it just gives me goosebumps. Yeah, I mean, without support, it doesn't happen, right? Um, I think this is something that the, the people who are way above me will, will explain to you in, in a better way than I can. But I understand that the way that our founders built the school, they wanted there to be a faith element involved. And so tuition doesn't cover the cost of educating each, stu each student. So there's an element of faith and fundraising involved. And I think that's, it can be frustrating, but I think it's also beautiful because we have to rely on God's provision. And I think that's really, really cool. And if he's not in it, we're not on it, right? That's one of the beautiful things about being in this school. I've been in two different regular prayer meetings that I have today. Um, the staff makes time to meet regularly to pray with each other for our leadership for the school for the community because it is a spiritual battle that's a beautiful thing about a biblical worldview right we understand that yes the material world is real but there's more to it than that and we're doing something that hopefully is very very upsetting to the enemy and we know he's going to come against that so our weapon is prayer we've got parents who are praying for us all the time and I know we have parents who I talk to who tell us that they're praying, they're too shy or they're too busy to belong to any formal group, but they're praying for us. And I mean, it's, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, there are many. I mean, I, can you ever get enough help? Can you ever get enough help as a coach? Can you ever get enough help as a, as a band director, as a teacher, especially elementary teachers, cutting everything out, making everything? I mean, I, in the upper, upper school, we have uh, TAs, which is amazing, um, but there's always more to do. And so there's always, even, even I'm going to say just, but even if it's just praying, right, just meeting and praying, just being a presence in classrooms, I mean, we, we can't get enough help. We have some maintenance workers who do the work of five or six people, and they do it joyfully, but they can't always get everything done as fast as a teacher would want it done. And so you see teachers stepping in, you see administrators stepping in. I mean, it, it's awesome. Yeah, I just, I love sharing God's Word with kids, and I love the kids. Kids are they're hot messes sometimes, but they're just wonderful. There's all these little image bearers, and there are all these potentials, all these beloveds, um, and just to get to minister to them is pretty cool. Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer his call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, 
free the captives and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome.